Good afternoon guys, welcome back to Maverick Baking and welcome back to another recipe video. If you're new to the channel, we are here at least once a week with a new recipe, review video, vlog or food based challenge. So do consider tapping that subscribe button if you're new. Today I want to show you guys how to make a simple but really fancy looking cake. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a loaf cake. So as long as you have a loaf tin, and a small amount of patience, you'll have a really fancy but super easy cake at the end of all this. Not only that, but we're gonna be making it in a slightly unusual but incredibly addictive flavor combination. Let me show you just how I made this chocolate and lemon marbled loaf cake. Let's go. this lovely little recipe starts out with equal quantities of soft butter and of oil. You can use olive, vegetable oil, whatever you have. Bit unusual, but stay with me. To that, you're going to pour in some caster sugar and a tiny little dash of vanilla, because to be honest, vanilla just lifts everything, even if its flavor doesn't belong there. <laughs> and you're just going to kind of gently smoosh those all together. It will look a little bit gross and not right, but again, stay with me. I promise you'll be fine. And you're going to want to beat that all together and it should start to look lovely and light and fluffy once everything is nice and incorporated in there. Then you're going to want to crack in three eggs. You're going to want to do these kind of individually so that it doesn't get all too wet and sloppy all at the same time. It helps to switch to a whisk at this point just so you can get a good, a good violent beating of those eggs. They deserve it, you know? They haven't done anything good for anyone. <laughs> By this point, you should have a beautifully kind of moussey, fluffy, pale, thick mixture that is ready to add your dry ingredients. We're going to start with some self-raising flour, but you can swap this out with plain flour and a bit of extra raising agent, and as always, a pinch of salt, because everyone needs to season their bakes. And you're just going to gently, gently, gently mix this in. Following this, you're going to need two bowls. We're going to split this mixture in half. Nothing major, just kind of gently and try and roughly get these even. But you know what? If, if, if you've got a bit more chocolate than lemon, I'm not going to tell anyone. So don't worry about it. <laughs> to the lemon bowl, you're going to want to add some lemon zest. Big shocker, I know. So the zest of about one lemon should do it especially if it's a kind of decent sized lemon. So just get that all in there. You're also going to want to add just an extra teensy bit of flour to the bowl. For the other side, you're going to want to use some cocoa powder. I would always recommend cocoa runners. They are the best. And maybe just a cheeky handful of chocolate chips. So you will have your chocolate batter ready to be mixed and your lemon batter ready to be mixed. Just give them a very gentle stir. You don't want to stir too much. It can disrupt the kind of light texture of the cake batter. And there you are. Next, you're going to want to look at a loaf tin. This, I think, is just a standard one pound metal loaf tin, which I have greased with a little bit of oil and some greaseproof paper just to help me lift the loaf cake out. And you're just going to want to scoop in equal measurements of your lemon and of your chocolate batter. Just kind of blob them all over the place with no rhyme, nor reason, just pure, pure cake-based chaos. So you should have something that looks something like this, a bit of a mess basically. Then with kind of a cocktail stick or the end of a knife, you can just kind of swirl and marble them all together. And that's what's gonna bake into that beautiful color contrast that you see in the finished product. Time to bake it. So I just pop mine into the oven at about 160 degrees Celsius. I'll have full measurements down below and baked it for about kind of 45 to 50 minutes. It really depends on your oven. Then topped it with just a little bit of chocolate ganache made with some cream, some chocolate, a tiny bit more lemon and a little bit of honey and some sea salt. And there you have a banging marbled lemon chocolate loaf cake. So that, lovely people, is how we ended up where we are right now with this gorgeous but softly <laughs> falling apart slice of lemon and chocolate loaf cake. Even just if I break off a small piece, the gorgeous kind of layering we have there with the lemon and the chocolate just kind of marbling their way through each other and The flavor is so nice and balanced. Thanks to the combination of that butter and oil, so, so moist, to the point that you might even find your cake has just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of sinking in the middle, it's perfectly fine. A couple of times making this cake, that did happen. It truly didn't affect the taste or the texture. And honestly, for this much moisture, it was worth it. 
Mm. Because of the cocoa powder, because of the ganache and the chocolate chips, it feels like a real kind of dessert treat, but that lift from the lemon zest and the little bit of sweetness from the lemon cake. There's a reason we've gone through two of these loaves in like three days. <laughs> If you guys want to try out this marble chocolate lemon loaf cake, the full recipe will be in the description box right below this video. And it will also be on my blog, maverickbaking.com, where you can find loads more recipes completely free all the time. This recipe is seriously worth trying. It's great while lemons are in season, but it's also enough of a treat for days when it's still kind of, you know, snowing outside. But I'm afraid that's all I have time for today, guys. Thank you as always so much for watching and I will see you for the next one. Oh hey, if you've made it to this channel, you probably like cookies, no matter what kind of shape or crazy size they decide to come in, or maybe you like making them too, or just licking the bowl when you are making them. Either way, you are in luck because no matter whether you like them crispy, super thin, chewy, nice and soft, or just downright huge, I have just launched the ultimate guide to cookie baking, available on Etsy or to my glorious Patreon people right now.